The last thing we want to discuss here is identifying influential observations. Now, influential observations are a data observation that significantly affects the least squares regression line slope and or y-intercept. And you're really looking for two things. You want um, the relative position of the observation and the relative horizontal position of the observation called leverage. So it's affected by both of those things. So where it is vertically and where it is horizontally. And I realized in the fall of 2020, I forgot to put on the definition of leverage. So I'm adding this in, and it will be in the notes for future semesters, but you might want to write it down. So leverage is a measure that depends on how much the observation's explanatory variable, in other words, it's x, differs from the mean value of all the explanatory variables. In other words, the center of all x values in the data set. Ooh, I guess I should make that a little longer, right? So that's what you're looking for when you're looking for leverage. All right, so we have a graph down here, and I think that it'll become clearer when we look at the three points on the graph that are especially brought out. So we have point 0.1 over here, point 0.2 over here, and point 0.3 over here. And what you want to think about is, do the points have both um, a different relative vertical position to the other points and a different relative horizontal position to the other points? Okay, so let's look here at point number one. Point number one has a different vertical position, but it's right in the thick of all the x values, right? So it's right amongst all these other data points. So point number one is an outlier. I mean, all three of these points are outliers, right? So that's not up for debate, right? They're all outliers. The question is, do they have, um, are they influential outliers? Are they influential observations? So we can make a note. So note, point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3 are all outliers. But which one is in influential is the question. If any, and the answer is there is one that's influential. We'll see it in a second. But they're all outliers. They're all far away from the rest of the data points. All right, now point number one is not influential. Point number one is an outlier in the y direction, but not in the x direction. Right, because it's much higher than the rest. That right, Remember, this is the y, right, the vertical. So it's the y direction, but not in the x direction. Okay, so that's not really going to be very helpful at all. If we want to think of it this way, it has um, a high residual, a large residual, I think I can put it that way. But um, small leverage, right? It's not far away in the x direction. Now, residual, because if I think about where all these points are, I can imagine there's a trend line, right? So I can imagine there's that trend line. The residual, the large residual is because it's far away from where that trend line would be from all the points gathered, right? So it's far away, so it has a large residual in the y direction, but it's not in the x direction. It doesn't have a lot of leverage because it's still sitting amongst all those points. All right, let's look at point number two which I guess I'll do in pink. I really, I really chose my colors strangely here. All right, point number two is far away in the x direction, so that's nice, but it's not, doesn't have a big residual because it's right along that trend line. So if you imagine that trend line from these dots coming out, that point is right along the, that line, right? So it's an outlier in the x direction but um, it sits close to the trend line. No, I'll just say it sits close to the trend line. I mean, technically I'm expanding the trend line to get out that far, but that's okay. Right, because the line can go on forever. Hmm. 
All right, an outlier in the x direction means it has a large leverage. But it sits close to that trend line, so it has a tiny residual. Look at that residual. It's that little bitty bit right there, that vertical distance there. So it has a small residual. That's not going to work, right? Influential points are going to have large values for both of these things. Right? All right, so just so that we're clear, outlier in the y direction is where the large residual is coming from, right? So same thing here. Out, um, sits close to that trend line is why it has a small residual, right? And then, just to highlight, not in the x direction is why it has small leverage. This is far away in the x direction, right? It's far away, so it has high leverage, okay? So it's far out here, lots of leverage, but really close to that trend line. No um, residuals, really small. All right, what about point three? Uh, in case you missed it, point three is going to be the influential one. Now, why is point three influential? Point three is an outlier, outlier in both the x direction and it has a huge residual. It's far, far away from that trend line. Matter of fact, I'd have to expand the trend line out a little bit. There you go. That's a huge residual. So it has a large residual and um, it's far away in the x direction. So it has a large residual and large leverage. So it's both. So it's an outlier in the x direction and it sits far away from the trend line. The other point that's that far away from the trend line is this one. Right? This is far away from the trend line. But it didn't matter for point 1 because point 1 didn't was not far away in the x direction. It was still amongst all the other points. Right? So far away from the trend line gives you a large residual. So this particular point has a large residual and large leverage. So this right here gets us our large leverage. I apologize. I realize I had done the wrong color there, so I switched it to blue to match our point. So it has an outlier in the x direction. That means it has large leverage, and it sits far away from the trend line, so it has a large residual. Ding, 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 ding. It has both things. So point three is influential. or is an influential observation, I guess I should say. Because it has both, and that's what you're looking for. You want your influential points to have both um, large leverage and a large residual. As a matter of fact, let's go back up here and make it clearer. So it's affected by two factors, the relative position of the observation, um, the relative vertical position of the observation and the relative horizontal position. So for the relative vertical position, you want it to have um, the residual, so called residual. Oh, actually, I guess I should just say residual. And then relative horizontal position. So an influential point will have large residual and large leverage. Right. It'll be far away in the x direction, which is the leverage part, and it'll be uh, far away from the trend line, which is the large residual part. And that would mean it significantly affects the slope of the intercept. We can see this particular graph actually right here. So you can see if I change point 1, if I, if I mess that around, it affects the line hardly at all. Like you don't really see the line changing. You can see it over here on these values if you look at them, but it's not really affecting the line in a way that I can visually see. Point 2 does affect it a bit. It's causing it to tilt a little bit, right? But point three, ah, now point three, I move it a little bit and the whole thing tilts over, right? And that's because point three is influential. 
So of those three points, point three has the most effect on the slope and the intercept, which is what it means to be influential. And you can see, oh, that trend line didn't look like that. That's true. That's because these other points are affecting it so much. So I was really drawing that trend line based on this clump of data over here, right, thinking about the pattern that was drawn.